Well, <clears throat> there it is. Today is February the 1st, 2023. So I've had this BIQU hurricane for two months. I got it December the 1st and it worked fantastically well uh, at printing what was included on the disc, that little micro SD card there. It, it printed that, those three files uh, incredibly well. Um, but then, then I did something that I uh, truly regret at this point. I uh, took off the fans that were on the uh, printhead. There it is, the printhead. It looks like a transformer, doesn't it? Well, an injured transformer at this point. Uh, yeah, there's a card behind here. See, that's where the all the wires plug into it. Anyway, you remove those fans and you remove the print head and you adapt the print head so that it can come off and on much easier and all that. And there's the blowers. Anyway, uh, yeah, I uh, found a really cool winged fan that I uh, put on it. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, getting it tweaked, getting it uh, modified, getting it to work right was a real problem. The, the print on Thingiverse is too small. Um, it didn't fit the blower fan, so I had to expand it to 106% and then 105% and then 107% to get the wings to connect up correctly. Anyway, long story short, um, I've had so much so many problems with this printer in the last month and a half since I started that process of improving the airflow on the print that uh, I decided to go back to uh, the original configuration. But these fans <clears throat> have full-size two-pin connectors and they don't work with the, the board. So anyway, this is my review, just so you know, of the Hurricane after two months, um, I cannot recommend it. I will not recommend it. Do not buy this printer. Uh, you're in for a lot of trouble because, in my opinion, it's very attractive. You know, it's a cool printer for 369 bucks from the U.S. warehouse. Absolutely. You know, it's got this Lamborghini styling, supposedly, which is kind of a fraudulent thing. And, you know, you can add this seven inch monitor, which is freaking fantastic for 59 bucks. And you can add a uh, second dual Z. That's really cool. Yeah, that really helps. Um, but there's two problems. Well, there's more than that. First of all, there's really noisy fans in this uh, printer uh, when you get it from the factory the fan for the power supply is just horrible the uh, case fan is also horrible and the uh, third fan which blows on the uh, stepper drivers is a monstrosity it's a little 3010 fan that is uh, hard mounted to a metal l bracket that is welded to the bottom of the case and it makes such a horrible high-pitched noise. But uh, I'll try to get back to that. So here's my thought on this printer, basically. Uh, Bike, you had a big vision. Let's create a clipper out of the box experience for uh, people that like to print things with 3D printers. Uh, and then they, did that you know big tree tech has the mana four board and they have the uh cb1 cb2 uh addition to it which is a uh, fake or faux um you know computer for the uh manta four so anyway they did that but here's the deal they put all their money into the electronics that are in this box you know they put all their money into that board and the computer that goes with it and the stepper drivers and all that. So, you know, then they had to buy uh, 
motors for the print head and extruders for the print head. And they had to build this fancy dancy print head, which, you know, is a rip off the Transformers movies and way too small. Gee, many crystal. And they had to design and build a board that it is behind her right there, behind it right there, which you can't buy on the uh, BIQU website. It's not available. So yeah, if you mess up that board, you're you're in a bad place. So what I'm trying to say is this. The extruder is garbage. Garbage. It's mechanical, two gears. Yeah, it looks great, but it's garbage. Absolute garbage. Okay, so that's a point to think about. Secondly, and this is even more important, the print head in here inside this plastic box is even more garbage. To uh, give you an example of what I mean by garbage, the distance between the two holes that mount the uh, print head to uh, the printer, they're not standardized. They're a little bit more than, I think it's 14 millimeters apart. So if you buy, for example, a uh, Spider 2, to see this, this is Spider 2. If you look at it, you can notice that the insides of those holes are bright. That's because I had to drill them out uh, to a larger size to get them to fit on this printer. Anyway, I don't know how that's ever going to turn out because, uh, yeah, I'm thinking about throwing this thing away or maybe gutting the printer and using the board and everything on a Core XY that I'm building anyway. So they had an economic challenge. Let's get this to market for 369 and they solved it by putting a cheap, funky extruder on the printer and a weird, cheap print head on the extruder. At least that's my opinion. That's what I think they did. Uh, I mean, it's just pure economics, you know. Um, another example. Okay, so this is the little 2.5 inch control screen that comes with the hurricane. You see? There it is. What a joke. You know, so 1970s. Anyway, so <clears throat> to meet the financial needs of their program, uh, they spent all this money on the board tech, and then they had to cut costs significantly on the extruder and the print head um, to make up for it. Okay, totally makes sense. We'll put a cheap monitor where we should have put this monitor. We'll put a weird garbage print head on it, and we'll put a totally stupid mechanical extruder on it. Okay, fine. Here's another point. When you have a mechanical extruder and you have a weird print head, I'll call it, and you're trying to run clipper, you're not going to get the feed rates and the heating you need when clipper wants to go 150, 160, 200 millimeters per second squared. It's not going to happen. So you got this printer that could do a lot of amazing things, but you got this print head and you got this extruder that can't keep up with it. Okay, so that's that. Okay, back to the fans. If I remember correctly, it's right here. There's a little fan uh, underneath this printer that it's a 3010. It's mounted vertically. It points at the four stepper drivers, which are 2209s, and it blows on them really, really fast. The fan is mounted to an L bracket. Um, it's The L bracket is welded to the bottom of the box. That would be the top here, okay? So it's this L-shaped bracket. It has a big hole in it so that the fan can pull air through it and push that air at those stepper drivers and 
if you don't use that fan, like let's say you take that fan off and you put in a quiet 4010 and you zip tie it to that L bracket, the uh, technology on the uh, CB1, CB2 is smart to say, hey, that fan isn't cutting it. We're not going to work. I know that because that's what I tried to do because I couldn't stand that high-pitched, whiny, ugly, ugly noise. Okay, so one thing you want to do Besides putting in a different print head, which is going to be really hard on this printer, and a different extruder, which is going to be really hard on this printer. See, I have a, uh, I have a 43 dollar or 47 dollar Micro Swiss here that I'm thinking about putting on it. So yeah, my plan is to try to get the Micro Swiss mechanical extruder and the uh, Spider 2 on this printer but it's not going to be easy for a bunch of reasons uh, somehow in the process of making their budget they also made it very difficult to upgrade this machine which is philosophically a very bad idea in my opinion okay so anyway back to the fan when i turned the printer on it said oh we can operate and that was the end of that Okay, fine. So, what you can do, take the bottom off the bottom portion of the printer, okay? Um, you have to take uh, an Allen wrench and cut hot half of the short end off because uh, one of the lower screw, the fan is screwed on diagonally, one at top left, one at the bottom right. You have to cut off the Allen wrench so that you can access that lower screw and get it the heck out of there. Okay, so after you do that, throw those screws away. They're garbage. They're total garbage. Get some decent screws. Put the screws through the front of the 3010 fan, okay? On the back of those screws, on the back of the fan, put a couple of very nice, small, firm rubber donuts. I don't know. I have a lot of those from uh, working with uh, uh, RC helicopters and drones and stuff. Um, but they're about almost an eighth of an inch thick in diameter. They're about three sixteenths to a quarter inch in diameter the other way. And uh, so you put those on the screws and then you put the two screws in the top two holes of the fan because that's what is accessible and then you remount the fan so that the screws slightly compress those rubber donuts so you're using the bracket you're not going to take it off um, you're isolating the vibration that the fan makes with those rubber donuts and i gotta tell you that is the best modification i've done to this printer it's hella quiet now well, let me say that again. I took out the uh, cheap 12-volt fan in the power supply and threw it in the garbage because it was garbage. Put a nice 12-volt fan in the power supply that's very, very quiet. Um, I took out the case fan, which was a uh, 24-volt. I think it was a 50-50, uh, 40-40, something like that. Anyway, it was hella noisy. I got rid of that and put a nice fan in its place. And, um, and then I isolated the 3010 with some rubber, rubber donuts behind it. And this machine is, in my opinion, 100% quieter. And that makes it much more uh, usable, in my opinion. So, anyway. <sighs> you know, when I got this fan... I was having problems after a few days. It was jamming up me, and I took the printhead apart. And of course, I wanted to put uh, the uh, the Blue Wings fan on this thing, and I had to mess with that a whole bunch because it wasn't designed properly. It was probably just uh, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, 
What I found is the uh, sensor for the hot end was sticking out of the back of the hot end halfway. Um, the hole in the hot end was screwed up. That's all I can say. It's like a, it wasn't uh, straight, you know, it was a wedge. And uh, someone pushed the hot end halfway into the, halfway into the block and said, that's fine. Also the, the the hot end is slathered with bor boron nitrate, you know, that white thermal paste that you can uh, use to make better conductivity, conductivity. So yeah, the thing is, um, you know, when I saw that, I took a picture of it and I sent it to BIQU and I said, hey, this is how it came from the factory. How about sending me a, a new hot end that isn't uh, bastardized by someone's uh, bad morning or too much coffee or whatever. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I got a email from them. Oh, we'll take care of it. We'll refer it to our technical people. And uh, then the technical people called me and said, or they didn't call me, they emailed me and they said, send us pictures, send us the order number information. I'd already done that. I'd already done that, but they wanted me to do it again. So I did it again. And uh, that's the last I heard of them. So here we are. Here we are at the two-month line. This printer is jamming constantly. The thing is, it uses a tungsten throat screwed into the top of the heat block, and then it uses PETG uh, tubing, PETG tubing. It comes down and it's a butt joint. I think the hole that goes through the uh, heat exchanger is a little bit wonky, kind of like the hole in the block that was a little bit wonky maybe. Um, so there's just enough movement in there or space in there for movement. So, you know, that tube is under pressure from the fitting, you know, the fitting, does that make sense? And uh, maybe it goes side to side. I mean, you know, when you're printing, you're retracting as well. And so the film is going back and forth all the time. So what I'm having experience, what I'm experiencing is I'm getting a, a jam that's right there at the top of the tube where it meets the throat. And that happens all the time. So, yeah, this is what I mean. Garbage print head, garbage extruder, great potential, totally um, limited by these uh, garbage add-ons. You know, I paid three sixty nine. dollars What a steal, right? And then I spent 60 bucks on this monitor and I spent $35 on the second Z-axis. And, uh, you know, I was going to buy a camera, but then it never showed up. I don't know. Uh, the thing is, if this printer had been $469, $569, it still would have been a great deal in my opinion. Um, because Clipper out of the box. Big tree tech. Um, if it had come with the 7-inch monitor, that would have been really Cadillac. If it had come with uh, the, uh, you know, this print head and this uh, extruder, what a, what a neat uh, tie-in. They could have got some Microswiss love and some Creality love, maybe. That would have been interesting. Uh, really... You know, if this printer had, just imagine a MicroSwiss direct drive right there. Wouldn't that be sweet? Um, I actually might think about it. But the problem is I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with this. You know, how do I deal with that card that's behind there, which I've totally ruined. You know, the original fans that came with this, they had micro, micro, super small two-pin connectors. Oh, my God. Super small, like the size of a, a kernel of corn, unpopped corn. Anyway, yeah, I totally ruined them very quickly. So at this point, I literally have these red wires. Uh, they're from the fans. The black and white wires coming out from behind the fence. Those go to the board 
and I literally have the ends of the wires soldered to what's left of the two point pin connectors. So, so anyway, um, if you're thinking about the uh, BIQU Hurricane, um, think about what I've said. Uh, I, I don't think you're going to find it easy to spend uh, $200 of your own money to upgrade this machine to where it should be so that it can be uh, a great out-of-the-box clipper, out-of-the-box printer. Uh, at least in two months of messing with this and taking this printer off over and over and over again and taking this extruder off and putting a different extruder on it over and over and over again and you know taking the gantry off and turning the base over and opening it up and trying to figure out what's what's going on what's the problem and you know which fan is making the most noise and how do i you know how do i change those fans i mean it's it's doable it's doable um and biqu has a uh, a system it's called the hermit crab system uh, but the problem is the board for that system is 60 by 60 and the board that goes behind this print head is not it's way smaller than that it's narrower and uh yeah so it i can't use it i just can't use it at all so really i'd have to take all of this stuff off and throw it away and uh, put a whole new uh, mechanism on the printer. I mean, you know, I, I might do that. Uh, but, you know, I could spend uh, 600 bucks on a nice Creality XY or, yeah, XY printer, Core XY printer and, and be in a better place. So, yeah. Okay, so... That's my rant and raving and yada, yada, yada. I hope you have a nice day. But, uh, yeah, don't upgrade this printer to the uh, Nathan Builds Robots uh, flying wings blower fan setup. It's more trouble than it's worth, in my opinion. Um, but if you do, I think the magic number is 107%. So you have to... Get the file, enlarge it by 107%, and that'll put the wings up so that they they work with whatever 5010 blowers you uh, use. But, you know, the blower fans are going to have full-size two-pin connectors, and they're not going to work with what's on this board. So you're going to have to modify the board, and that means getting in there and dealing with all these little, teeny, totally totally weird plastic connectors that are brittle as can be oh my god they are just so brittle so not flexible and so easily broken so yeah buyer beware i guess there you go hey this is uh cordless media 2.0 if you like this video i don't know why you would it's just boring yakking um you know subscribe maybe uh Push the like button, maybe. Uh, comment and tell me I'm full of it if you want. That's fine. Um, tell me about your experience. I'd like to know. Um, if you own a BIQU printer, some other kind of printer, and you've had a good experience, I'd love to hear about that. Uh, and if you're just tired of being uh, ripped off by uh, companies in Asia that build garbage and force it out of the factory as fast as they can. Um, you know, thumbs up or something. I don't know. Anyway, take care. Bye.